All right, so today, today we're going to do a tutorial sheet week for tutorial, sh tutorial sheet number four. So, so if you go to the website, you will see what the, the you will see the tutorial sheet number four, which is, let me show you, is, um, so this is the tutorial sheet four. So it has one, two, it has seven questions, right? So I'll try to do as many as I can uh, today. I may not be able to complete all of them, but I will see what I can do. All right. Um, and if you guys have questions, please use the chat room. Um, please use the chat room to to enter your questions and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can. Okay. All right, so let's start with question one. So let me change the camera. Um, I don't know whether you can see this, but if you can't see this well, I suggest you, you look at the the online version, the version in the course website. Okay, so so this is this is question one. Um, you are given this data set, and the question is to find the quantiles or the quartiles at p equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 0.9. All right. So let me let me show you how to do this. All right. This is question one. Um, so you have the formula I'm going to use this is something that I gave you. Uh, I don't know whether you remember this formula. Q of P equal to This is, this is the formula I gave you some time ago, where R is equal to P times N plus one. And your R prime is the integer part of R. Okay, do, do you guys remember this formula? I mean, I gave it to you uh, some time ago in, in the class. Yeah, so. So this is the formula I'm going to use to in order to answer question one, and also question two, and also the the, the remaining questions in, in in the sheet, right? All right. So so for for this data set, your n n is the number of data points is 25, and p we want the p to be equal to 0.1. 0 0.1, right? That's the first value for P. So your R is going to be 0 0.1 times N plus 1, which is 26, right? So it's going to be 2.6, right? And your R prime is the integer part of 2.6, so it's 2. So your Q at 0 0.1 is using this formula here, right? It's going to be It's gonna be this. All right. This is the part. This is what you get if you use this formula, right? Okay. And this will work out to be equal to zero point four seven five. Is this is this clear to all of you now? Hello, guys. Are you okay with this? Yeah. By the way, uh, the, the deadline for quiz three just passed. I hope all of you, all of you have done quiz number three, and you will get an email. You will you will get an email from me in the next one hour or so, uh, giving you a mark and the 
and the feedback and the correct answer and how the correct answer was was obtained. All right, so check your email in the in the next hour or so. Okay. All right, so this is uh, quantile at 0 0.1 equal to 0 0.475. The next part of the question is asking you for to compute the same thing at 0 0.25. So P equal to 0 0.25. By the way, can, can you see this visualizer or is it not clear? Hello guys. Is it, I mean, I'm, I try to focus, not very clear. Uh, okay, maybe this is better now. Maybe this is better now. Is it better now? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. So R is uh, 0 0.25 times n plus 1, which is 6.5, right? Uh, okay, so your R prime is going to be the integer part, which is 6. So your Q of 0 0.25, which is the first quartile, going to be this, right? Then in brackets, you have x like this, okay? Now, if you compute this, guys, you will get 2.1055, all right? Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, this is the best visualizer I can afford to buy. I wish I could get some, I mean, I don't get any money from the university. So this is the best one I can, I, I can buy. I'm sorry about it. Okay, the next thing is P equal to 0 0.5, which corresponds to the median. So your R in this case is 0 0.5 times N plus one, which is 13, okay? And your R prime is the integer part of 13, which is 13. So Q at 0 0.5 is gonna be X13 plus, all right, in this formula, 13 minus, you have 13 minus 13, so which is zero. So, so, so this, the second term is, is zero. And this is equal to 2.895. So, so that's the, that's the, the median the median of the data, right? I'm really disappointed with the number of people turning up for these tutorials. I don't know why there are so few coming. I wish, maybe you could ask your friends to turn up, I don't know. Okay, the next thing is P equal to 0 0.75, right, which corresponds to the third quartile. So your R is, times n plus one, right? And this is gonna be 19, 19.5, okay? And your R prime is gonna be the integer part of this, which is 19, okay? And uh, so your Q at 0 0.75, which is the third quartile, is gonna be, Okay, now if you, if you work this out. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know some, sometimes the tutorial, I, I, I suggest you guys in, in the future, you, you just look up, you can, if you go to my course website, it, it, uh, it shows the times of the tutorial for every week. Yeah, so you can attend the one that is convenient to you, right? Okay. All right, guys. So this is the, the third quartile of the data, right? The next thing, um, the next thing we need to do is is P equal to zero point nine, 
for p equal to 0 0.9, um, r is going to be 0 0.9 times n plus 1, which is 26. So this is going to be 23.4, right? And your r prime is the integer part of this, which is 23. So your q at 0 0.9 is... Okay, right, and if you work this out, this will be equal to 14. So this is the, the point ninth quantile or quartile of the data. All right, so the question is also asking you if the data are symmetric. Now, if the data are symmetric, if the data are symmetric, you would expect the distance between the median and the first quartile to be approximately equal to the distance between the third quartile and the and the median. Right? So remember this is the this is the distance between the median and the first quartile. And this is the distance between the third quartile and the median. And this will be equal if the data are symmetric. Now for the data that is for, for the thing that we just worked out over, over here, this this guy is equal to 0 0.7902. And this guy is equal to 3.2453. All right, so, so these two are not even close to being equal. So what you can say is that the, the data are not symmetric. All right, that's because, I mean, these two numbers are far apart. They're not even close, right? Okay, guys, so that completes question one. Uh, any questions, anything that is this clear to all of you or anything that you, anything that is not clear, please let me know. Are you, are you okay with this? Guys, are you okay with question one? Okay, thank you. I mean, uh, even if, if, if you're not clear, if even something small is not clear, let me know. Right, now question two, you are given this data set. There are four parts to the question. The first part, uh, I know you, you, some of you can't read this, but the first part is to compute the five number summary of the data. Now, I think I told you this last week, uh, a five number summary is, is something that is made up of five summary statistics. The first, the first of the five numbers is the minimum or the smallest data set, right? So if you look at the data here, this is the data. The data is arranged from the smallest to the largest. So the smallest is, is, this, is this data here, which is 29.1. Or zero, right? And the second, the second of the five numbers is the first quarter, which corresponds to p equal to zero point two five. So your r, your r is going to be p times n plus one. N is the number of data, which is which is twenty here, right? So n plus one is twenty one, and it, this will be five point two five. Okay, so your R prime is the integer part of this, which is five. So your Q at 0 0.25 is this, right? Multiplied by
multiplied by this. And if you work this out, this will be equal to 37.0325. So this is the first quartile of the data. All right, the next number in the five number summary is the median, which corresponds to P equal to 0 0.5. So your R is 0 0.5 times N plus one, which is 10.5. And your R prime is the integer part of this, which is 10. So your median Okay, now if you work this out, guys, if you work this out, this will be equal to 41.186, right? So this is the third number in the five number summary. And the fourth number in the five number summary is the third quartile, which corresponds to P equal to 0 0.75. So your R is this, which is, 15.75, the R prime is the integer part of this, which is 15. So your Q at 0 0.75 is 0.75. Right, times, you multiply this by 16, minus 15, sorry, excuse me, 15, okay, right, and if you work this out using a calculator, this will be equal to 40, sorry, 44, 44.01975, so this is the, the fourth number in the five number summary. And the final number is the maximum or the largest data point in the data. So if you go back to the data, because since this is arranged from the smallest to the largest, the largest data point is this one, right? So the maximum is 51.261. All right, so just to summarize, just, just to summarize, the, the five number summary, uh, the minimum, which is this one, the first quartile, which is this one, the median, which is this one, the third quartile, which is this one, and the maximum, which is this one. So these are the five numbers, some uh, summary, uh, summary of a data set, right? Okay, guys, all right. The, that's the first part of question two. The second part of question two is asking you to compute the sample mean and the sample standard deviation of the data. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, any questions so far? I mean, let me, I mean, if you have questions, just feel free to use the chat room, guys, as always. I'm, I'm happy to answer all your questions, okay? So this is question two, part two. So the sample mean, remember, is just simply what you sum all the data and you divide by the number of data. So this is the sum of all the data and divide by there are 20 data points. And if you work out this, this is what you will get. All right. Okay, so this is the sample mean. Now to find the sample standard deviation, first you need to find the sample variance, right? This is the notation for sample variance, you may recall. And the formula that I'm gonna use is the unbiased version. Remember, I gave you two, two formulas for sample variance. One is, one is has an N minus one in the bottom, the other one has an N in the bottom, but this one is the unbiased, this one is the better one because this is unbiased, 
right? So, we, so whenever you are asked to find the sample variance, you should use this one, right? Okay, and you may also recall that you may also recall that this formula can be re, uh, rewritten can can be rewritten as as follows. All right, this is this is another another. Uh, this, these two expressions are e equivalent to each other. Actually, I gave a proof. I gave a proof that this is equal to this in the class. You should look, I think you should look at week two. Week, week two knots, you will see that these two are equal. I'm gonna use this because this is easier to use for, computa for computations. Now, N minus one, N is 20, so it's gonna be 19. Now, sum of Xi squared is gonna be This is the first data up to, this is the last data, right? And then minus N, N is 20 times X bar. This is your X bar. So it's gonna be 40.6942 square, right? Now, if you work this out, guys, this will be equal to 30 point. All right. So this is the sample variance. Now to find the sample standard deviation, which is denoted by S, is the positive square root of the sample, sample variance. So it's the positive square root of 30.54325. And this is equal to 5.527. All right, guys, so, so this is the sample mean, and this is the sample variance, and this is the sample standard, standard deviation, right? So they are, not, they are not so difficult to compute, right? All right, so let's go back to question two. Any questions, just please, please feel free to use the chat room, okay? The next part is to draw a histogram uh, with interval of length five and ranging from 25 to 55. All right, I think I showed you how to draw a histogram in the class. Some of you may remember, some of you maybe forgot how to do it, but let me show you once again. Let me show you once again if you forgot. So this is question two, part three. Now, in order to draw a histogram, you need to have three columns. First is the interval column. The next is the frequency column, okay? And the next is the density column. All right, in this case, we want the intervals to go from 25 to 55 in steps of five, all right? So, so you will have intervals like looking like, intervals looking like this. So the first interval will be 25 to, to 30, all right? The second interval will be from 30 to 35. The next one will be from 35 to 40. 40 to 45, 45 to 50, and finally 50 to 55. So these are these these are the intervals. Now, next thing we need to do is to find the frequency. So basically, you need to find for each interval how many how many of these data points fall in each of these intervals. For this interval, there is only one data point. We can cut, which is mainly this one. This is the only data point falling in this interval. All right, for the next interval, it would be two. The next, it will be five, eight, three, one. All right, so these are the frequencies. Now, to find the density column, to find the density column, you will use the following formula. Right, which is the frequency 
right? I think I gave you this formula in the class some time ago. Frequency divided by the number of data, right, times the interval width. Right? The number of data is 20, right? The interval width is, is five. So 20 times five is 100, all right? So the density will be one over 100, two over 100, five over 100, eight over 100, three over 100, and one over 100. So these are, these are the density values, these are the frequencies, and these are the intervals. Now to draw the histogram, what you need to do is you need to plot this versus this, right? And you should do that. I have already done the plot. Let me show you. If you, done, if you do the plot, this is, it will look something like this. It will look something like this. So on the y-axis, you have the density and on the x-axis, you have the intervals, right? And this is the, this is the plot that you will get. Now, now let me show you. If you, if you compute the, if you compute the area, if you compute the area below the, below the histogram, that, that will be equal to, will be equal to one, because as you know, as you, as you know, the, the probability of any distribution must add up to one, right? So all the area that you should compute the area of each of these rectangles and add them up, you must get one, right? All right, that's why this is known as the density, density versus the interval, right? All right, guys. So this is how you draw, I mean, if you're asked to draw a histogram, right, this is how, this is what you will do. You will create this table first, and then you draw the density versus the interval. And this is what you get, okay? Any questions so far, guys? Talk to me, guys. You are keeping quiet today. What's up? Hmm? Are you okay? No? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's question question two part three. Um, the next okay. There's one more part to question two. It's asking you whether the data are symmetric or not. Okay. That's question part four. So this is question two, uh, part four. Now, if, as I said before, if, if the data, if the data are symmetric, okay, then you would expect the distance between the you would expect the distance between the median and the first quartile to be approximately equal to the distance from the third quartile to the median, right? Now for the data, for the thing that we just worked out that this guy is equal to 41.186 minus 37.4325. And this guy is equal to 44.01975 minus 41.186. And these, if you compute them, if you have a calculator with you, you should, you can compute this and you will see that they are not too far from each other. They are not too far from each other. So they,
this uh, approximately equal. So, so the data are approximately symmetric. Okay. All right, guys. So this completes question two. Are you okay with this? Before I go to question three. Hello guys, talk to me. Are you any questions on question two, which I just finished? No? Okay, thank you. All right, so let's let's go to question three. Question three is about this table here. Um, so you have the, you have this table. I know you may not be able to read this because the poor quality of uh, of the visualizer, but if you should look at the course website, you you can see a better picture of this. So you have three columns, the interval column, the frequency column, and the percentage column. There are two parts to this question. The first part is asking you to compute the density at x equal to 20 and x equal to 80, right? So let me, let me show you how to do it. So this is question three. Part A, we want to compute the density at x equal to 20. Uh, now remember that the, I just told you a minute ago that the density is computed using this formula, that is frequency divided by the number of data. Right? Multiplied by the interval width. Okay, this is the formula for the density which I gave you. Right now, x equal to 20. If you look at x equal to 20 in this table, I know you can't see it clearly, but I know you can't see it clearly, but um, x equal to 20. If you look at if you look at your computer, your laptop, right? You will see that x equal to 20 falls in this interval. Right in this interval, and the corresponding frequency is 142. Right? Can you see that, guys? All right. So this is equal to. This is equal to 142. Is the frequency divided by the number of data is, is 500, times the length of each interval is. Is 10. Right. Okay, so this will be equal to 0 0.0284. So that's the that's the density. That's the density of the uh, at x equal to 20, right? Okay, let me try to adjust this. I'm sorry, this is the best I can do. Sorry. Okay, next we want the density at x equal to 80. Now for x equal to 80. The density is gonna be the following because go back to the table x equal to 80 falls in this interval. Can you see this? If you look in your laptop, this is the interval that contains x equal to 80. The corresponding frequency is is six, right? So this is gonna be six, right? Divided by 500 times 10, which is 0 0.00112. All right, so this is the density at x equal to 20, and this is the density at x equal to 80. So that completes part A. Part B, part B says the following. Part B is saying that is to consider the same uh, thing as above, but to group the intervals so that the length of each interval is is, is 20, not, okay, the starting at x equal to five. And we want to, we want to compute the densities at x equal, to, x equal to 20 and x equal to 80. Right, you see, you see, you, do, do you read the question, guys? If you read the questions, what is what is saying is to is to rearrange the tables so that the length of each interval is 20, not, 
10. So basically what we need to do is the following. We need to, we need to combine, we need to combine two of the intervals at a time. So this is, this is what you will get. I know I'm sorry for the poor quality of the visualizer, but this is the best I can do. Can you, can you see what I'm writing or not? Um, you see what I'm doing is, is that I'm combining, combining two of the intervals at a time. So, so now, now you see the length of each interval is, is 20, not 10. So the first interval goes from five to 25. The second goes from 25 to 45 then 45 to 65, then 65 to 85, and so on. Right now, okay, let's try to redo the densities, right? So x, at x equal to, at, at x equal to 20, at x equal to 20, the density values, right, the x equal to 20 will, will fall in this interval, by the way, it, it will fall in this interval, right? And the dense, the frequency is gonna be 83 plus 142. So the frequency is 83 plus 142 divided by the number of data is 500 and the length of the interval is now 20. Now, if you work this out, this is what you will get, okay? Now for x equal to 80, right, x equal to 80, if you go back to the table, it falls in this, in this interval, x equal to 80, falls in this interval, right? And the frequency is 13 plus six, right? So it's gonna be 13 plus six divided by 500, times 20, which is 0 0.0019. All right, so this is the density, sorry, excuse me. This is the density at x equal to 20, and this is the density at x equal to 80. Now, you see, in part in part A, we, we took the interval width to be 10, and in part B, we increase the interval width to 20, but but the density values at 20 has not changed a lot. It goes from 0 0.0284 to 0 0.0225. It's not a lot of change. And similarly, the density values at 80 also hasn't changed a lot. It goes from 0 0.0012 to 0.0019, so it's not a lot of change. So what we can say is the following, that the density values, the density values are similar for the two, for the two interval width. Right, because as, as I just explained, the increase in the interval width from 10 to 20 hasn't changed the density values very much. It goes from this to this, and similarly from this to this, all right? Okay, any questions, guys? So this completes question three. Hello, guys, talk to me. Are you, are you, do you have questions on question on, on, on three? You okay with that? Okay, thank you. All right, the next question is, is question four. Question four is outside the syllabus, so I'm not gonna do it. So ignore question four. I will not ask you this question in the test or the exam. Yeah, so in the exam, I mean, there will be no test for this course. 
So the next question is question five. So I'm going to move on to question five, which is this one, right? So please, so the the first part is to, you're given this data set and the first part is asking you to do the fine number summary of the data. So you know what to do. So the fine number summary, as I said before, is the minimum first quartile, median third quartile and the maximum, all right? So let's let's try to do that, guys. So this is question five, part one. So the minimum, minimum is the smallest data because since the data is arranged from the smallest to the largest, the minimum is this one, which is 30, 31. Now to find the first quartile, you put P equal to 0 0.25. So your R up is gonna be 0 0.25 times N plus one, N is 18, right? So your N plus one is 19. So this is gonna be 4.75. And your R up prime is the integer part of this, which is, which is four. All right, so the first quartile, all right, it's gonna be using the formula that I mentioned before. It's gonna be this, right? Okay. Now, if you work this out, this will be sixty. Yeah, so that's your, that's your first quartile. The next thing we need to work out is the median, right, which corresponds to P equal to 0 0.5. So your R will be 0 0.5 times 19, which is 9.5. And your R prime will be nine, the integer part of nine, 9.5. So your median, it's gonna be okay, and and if you work this, if you work this out, you will get seventy seventy eight as the median, right? And next is the third quartile. So your P is 0 0.75. Your R will be 0 0.75 times 19, which is 14.25. And your R prime is the integer part of this, which is 14. So your third quartile, It's gonna be it's gonna be this right in brackets right okay now if you work this out guys this will be equal to eighty seven point two five. So this is the third quartile. And finally, the maximum. Maximum is simply the largest data point. So if you go back to the data set, this is the data, the largest value is this one here. All right, so, so the maximum is 94. So these are the five number summary. So just to highlight, let me highlight. So this is the, the first of the five numbers the minimum, the second of the five numbers, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, okay? So these are the five number summaries, okay? Now the question is also asking you to compute the IQR. I don't know if you guys remember what an IQR is. IQR stands for interquartile range. 
and is defined as the as the distance between the first the first and the third the first and the, the first and the third quartiles and if you work this out this will be 17.5 17 17 so this is the interquartile range right okay guys all right so that completes part 1 now part two of question five is asking you to draw the box plot. Uh, you guys remember what the box plot is. I did an example, a box plot, uh, I have already drawn it, guys. So let me show you how it will, for this data set, the box plot will look like this. Hope you can see this, right? Uh, I don't have much time left, so let me let me briefly explain what these different things are. This middle line here is the is the median, is the median, which is the which we already worked out. So this is Q at zero point five, which is equal to seventy seventy eight. So this is the median, and this line here. This line here corresponds to the, the first quartile or Q at 0 0.25, which we already worked out to be 69.75. And this line here is the third quartile, is the third quartile, right? And we already worked it out, it to be equal to, um, let me see here, 87.25, right? Okay, and then this, this, this guy here is known as the low adjacent, and this guy here is known as the upper adjacent, right? I think I explained that, I explained how to compute this in the class, you may recall. And there's also something which is not in this graph, which is the low offense. Um, you should take, I think I explained this in the class, guys. I don't know whether you remember this or not. You should take a distance of 1.5, 1.5 multiplied by IQR from this, you will get to, you will get to this, right? This will be equal to, 43.5, right? And this is known as the lower, the lower fence, right? Um, do you remember this from the class guys or no? Right, this is known as the lower fence. And similarly, if you take a 1.5 times IQR from this to up to say here, beyond the plot actually, so this distance is 1.5 times IQR, right? Then what you get here is, is known as the upper fence. And if you compute this coordinate, you will get it to be, you will get it to be 113.5, right? So the upper fence is, is 1.5 times IQR from the third quartile. And the lower fence is 1.5 times IQR from the low, the first quartile, right? So this is from the third quartile upwards. This is from the, the first quartile downwards, right? And the, to compute the lower adjacent, the lower adjacent is basically, is basically the, is basically the smallest data that is greater than the lower fence. So this is this level here is known as the lower lower adjacent. And I explained that in this in the class, which is is defined to be equal to the smallest smallest data right, that is greater than the lower fence, which is forty three point five, right? Okay, and if you work it out, it will be equal to, this guy here will be equal to 63. And the upper adjacent, which is this one, right? 
this is the upper edges and, and is defined to be so this guy here is known as the upper adjacent. Hope you can see this all amount of red. Known as the upper adjacent. Okay, and is defined and is defined to be the largest, the largest data that is less than the upper fence, which is 113.5. And if you work it out, if you work it out, this will be equal to this coordinate here will be equal to 94. Okay. So these are the things. In order to draw a box plot, you need seven things, right? I know I just run out of time, but just be with me for a second. So this is the low, you need seven coordinates: the lower fence, the lower adjacent, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile the upper adjacent and the upper fence. So there are seven things that you need to work out in order, in order to draw a box plot. So I hope you, I hope, I, I know it's kind of messy, but you should, you should do a few examples like this, you'll be okay. And these two data points are outliers. These two are outliers because they are below the lower fence. So these are, known as outliers since they are outside of the low anything that is outside of the lower fence or outside of the upper fence are known as outliers so in the, for this data set there are only two outliers because these two are these two are below the lower fence so they are known as the outliers all right guys so that completes part two of question five and I already run out of time, so part three, I won't be able to do part three today, but I will post the full solutions to all the seven questions later today. So if you go to the course website uh, later today, you will be able to see the, the typed solutions, the handwritten solutions, and the video solutions for all seven questions in the tutorial sheet. All right, guys, so are you okay with that? everything we've done today? Or you have questions? Please let me know. Uh, if, if you do not, then I will have a good evening or have a good afternoon or good evening. I will talk to you later. And any questions you guys have, please feel free to contact me 24-7. Bye by phone, email, Skype, or Zoom. My phone number is 0161-273-2941. Uh, you're most welcome to contact me 24 seven. And just a reminder that I will send you the mark and the feedback uh, to quiz number three in, in a few minutes time, uh, in, in about maybe in the next half an hour. In the next half an hour, you will get an email from me, okay? All right, have a great day, guys. Thank you. Bye.